So I'm here in the Sawtooth Mountains, uh, a couple hundred feet above Alpine Lake, which sits just below Sawtooth Lake. Uh, you access this area from the Iron Creek Trailhead. And looking east, uh, the little town of Stanley is down there along the Salmon River and some of the mountains beyond them, some of the Salmon River Mountains. And uh, this is a great spot up here to look at a couple of things. The sawtooths are made out of two different types of granitic material from two different time periods. We have the older Cretaceous, um, 90 or so million year old granite that's part of what we call the Idaho Batholus. So a huge chunk of central Idaho is composed of this granitic material that formed when one plate slid or subducted beneath North America. Magmas were generated and those magmas rose towards the surface. Sometimes they fed surface volcanoes, which have long been eroded, but a lot of times that magma stayed underground, cooled slowly and formed these big expanses and big swaths of granite uh, in the area. So that's one phase of granite. And then 50 million years ago, we had another period of magma intrusion into the area. It also produced surface volcanoes. Um, a type of material called the chalice volcanics. But a lot of that magma in this area stayed underground and cooled slowly to form what's called the sawtooth granite. And in places they're, they're hard to tell apart and the contact between the two very, very oftentimes is more of a gradational zone of mixing of the two magma types. Sometimes it's a sharp line. And I'm in a zone here where you can actually see some of the differences between the two granites and some of the relationships. And that's what I want to kind of show you here. But first kind of a big picture view, these kind of toothy pinnacles along this ridge line. That's the younger 50 million year old sawtooth granite. It tends to form bigger cliffs in general. It's got a little bit more of a pinkish hue uh, to it. If you get up close and personal, and we'll look at it here in a second, it sometimes has uh, big pink potassium feldspar crystals. Um, and then if we kind of look back up into the trees here, we can see there's a darker granite, kind of a grayish material, also making up some of these these rocks to the south here. And this is part of the Idaho batholith. And what's great about this location is we get such clean exposures of the granite because of the glacial activity. So as the glaciers and the ice and the grit in the ice has gr uh, grinded these, the rocks beneath them, it's scoured out the rocks, it creates clean faces and spectacular exposures. We can actually see that um, right here along this little face here. So you can actually see this perfectly smooth, oh man, to the touch, it's just polished. And you can see some of these striations as well. So you can see that the glacier here has left these big lines and gouge marks. There's actually a bit of a, a depression right here. Wow, that is just smooth as polished marble right there. Um, as the ice has moved down the canyon and towards the lake down here during times of uh, glacial advances. So let's look at these two granites here up closer. Um, and there's some nice contacts down here that show some of the relationship. So let's get these two granites kind of straight in our our brain. So this is typical um, Idaho batholith. This kind of chocolate chip looking black and white mixture of things. And it's got all the usual character of minerals, quartz, potassium feldspar, plagioclase feldspar, biotite, hornblend, that sort of thing. Um, and then if we come over here, we can see a little bit of the uh, sawtooth granite. So it's much pinker, uh, bigger crystals in general. In it. This one's been glacially polished a little bit as well. But then there's spots where we can kind of see the two mixing a little bit. And so remember, this black and white material is older. That's the granite that was here from 90 million years ago onward. And then later we would have this pulse of magma 50 million years ago pushing itself into the cracks in the rock, maybe generating more cracks as, as fractures are created and kind of creating these um, these shapes here that we see. So here's a nice margin whoops, between the Idaho batholith here on the left and then here's some of the sawtooth granite over here. So you can actually see this contact, uh, this irregular contact between the two. Um, had these granites intruded other rock types, maybe sedimentary rocks or some other rock type, we might see good mineralization occurring here. But because these rocks both occurred or were created underground under intense temperatures and pressures, uh, the reaction or the, the contact between the two a lot of times doesn't really show 
uh, anything different. There wasn't any chemical reactions happening here because it's very similar rock types. Um, and so we can see sort of these blobs of older um, Cretaceous batholith rock intruded by the younger granitic material. Sometimes it forms more like layered zones like that. The other thing we can see in places is as this rock is fractured and as more magma is pushed into it, a lot of times it creates these lines, uh, dikes that are cutting through them. Sometimes they are um, what we call aplite dikes, meaning they're very fine grained type of granitic material because it cools very quickly. Uh, let's see what else we can find over this way. Here's another really nice contact uh, between the two granites here. You can actually see maybe a little bit more of a swirling. There's a real sharp contact here. Uh, and then it comes down, kind of irregular. We can see that it's cut by some of these dikes. So these would have to be younger than the granite that they're cutting. Again, just a simple principle in geology. Um, yeah, so more of the same. Oh, this looks pretty cool over here. Let's let's head down to this little spot here. There's some kind of some swirling features, some different textures in here. Let's see what we get. Um, yeah, so we can see again the more dark colored uh, granite. There's a wide swath of uh, aplite dike cutting through that, and then there's some thinner ones as well. So it's all just kind of mixing together, these two granitic rocks. But this is really what makes the heart and the core of the Sawtooth Range are these two different types of granites uh, here in the Sawtooth Mountains. So I think I'll just kind of wrap up with that. Um, might see some other cool exposures around the way, but pretty good exposures here of these two different granites, uh, some of the contacts between the two. Um, things you might see along the trail if you're heading up to Sawtooth Lake or other places in the Sawtooth. So it's a great day, good geology, totally, totally cool. Have a good one.